What's going on guys? We're in cold and windy Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We're gonna drive the all new Hyundai Palisade today. Yes, Hyundai brought us out of Texas once again to drive a new SUV. This time we're in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I'm driving the all-new Hyundai Palisade. This is a part of the country that I had never been to yet, and it's incredibly beautiful, so forgive me if I came home with more photos and video of the landscape than the vehicle itself. I also didn't get to do as much as I would have liked with my time in Idaho, but that's how these events go sometimes. Not to mention the weather wasn't on our side. But this is just the first impression video and I'll definitely be getting my hands on a Palisade for a full week and a full review. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe and hit that bell. With all that being said, let's jump into it. So what is the Palisade? The Palisade is Hyundai's all new three row family focused SUV. By standard, it's an eight passenger SUV and can also be configured with captain's chairs in the center row or a seven passenger layout. With the addition of the Palisade, Hyundai is now on track with seven SUVs. You have the Nexo, the Kona and the Kona EV, the Tucson, the Santa Fe, now the Palisade and coming very soon is going to be a venue, an even smaller SUV than the Kona. Trim levels for the Palisade include an SE with a base price of $31,550, an SEL with a base price of $33,500, a convenience package for the SEL, a premium package for the SEL, and then the limited trim is the top of the line at $44,700. Hyundai has always liked to push the line when it comes to design and the Palisade is no different. One of the big keys that Hyundai was trying to betray here was a sense of balance and solidity that it's glued to all four wheels. And I think they did a good job here. I really like the design. It looks big and bold. And that's the kind of design in SUVs that I like. You get this special light bar that runs through the top turn signal all the way down through the headlight Keeping in line with the Kona and the new Santa Fe, you get that stacked headlight, and then above that is the turn signal. You get vents embedded into the headlights that actually help with aerodynamics. And overall, it's 3.6 inches wider than the outgoing Santa Fe XL. There are a lot of other design cues throughout the exterior here, including a strong C-pillar, it goes right over the top of the rear wheels, body mounted side mirrors, and design that actually downplays the tailpipes. All of this though, I'm gonna have to get into a lot more detail when I get the car for more time. But just once again, I really do like the design here. Under the hood, you get one engine option, no matter what trim level you're picking. It is a 3.8 liter V6 engine. This pushes 291 horsepower, 262 foot-pounds of torque. It's matched up to an eight-speed Shiftronic transmission and has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. Moving inside, there is a plethora of design details and tech in here, so we're gonna run through these pretty quickly. The main theme when designing this was the serenity of a yacht. One of the key things that I look for in a family three row SUV is the amount of space behind the third row. The Palisade has 18 cubic feet behind the third row, enough to fit a large ice chest, which is a good amount of space. It's a little bit smaller than the competing Telluride, a little bit smaller than the Atlas, which I own, 
but much bigger than some of the other competitors. One of the key details inside is the electronic gear shifter. This provides more interior space and allows for an opening in between the driver and passenger underneath where the shifter is for things like a purse or other items that you want to throw down there. Keeping the family happy is 12 cup holders and four bottle holders throughout the cabin. For me, this basically means that the kids can just keep more trash in the car, but I'm happy that it has more cup holders rather than less. Trying to rival the number of cup holders is the number of USB chargers. You have seven outlets total. Every seat of the Palisade has USB connectivity. And I think they're placed in pretty convenient locations and kind of out of the box thinking there. You do get tri-zone AC controls. So the driver, passenger, and rear seats are all on different zones. And I shouldn't even have to explain to you why this is great for families. You also can get heated and cooled seats as well as a heated steering wheel. You get second and third row diffusion roof air vents. This allows you to direct and diffuse the air so that it keeps you more comfortable. Another thing that I'll have to show you in more detail during the full review. Another thing that is super important to look at when getting a three row SUV is how easy it is to get from the second row to the third row or how easy it is to climb in from the door into the third row. Hyundai has what they call the one touch walk-in button. And this allows with one touch the seat to um, fold up and push forward. So it makes it easier to get into the third row. And obviously if you need more storage, the second and third row seats can be folded down to give you a full flat storage space. Tech wise up front, you get a 10.25 inch widescreen split screen display. This is a pretty intuitive and responsive system, and I've never had any issues with Hyundai's infotainment. You also get a turn signal monitoring system that shows a view from the side cameras up in the instrument cluster and a blind spot view monitor. This is much like the tech that's in the Kia K900 I reviewed a while back. Hyundai also likes to tout what they call the driver talk mode, which allows the driver to hit a button to broadcast their voice to the rear seats through these speakers. Now, Hyundai didn't invent this technology. It's in some other vehicles, namely the Toyota Highlander, but I think it's pretty cool and it can be useful. You also have a quiet mode. So if kids are sleeping in the rear, you can hit the quiet mode and that'll turn off the rear speakers to reduce the noise in the rear. Another really cool tech feature, Hyundai dubs the safe exit assist. This is a sensor that won't let the rear doors open if there's an approaching vehicle detected. I think this is really cool and makes a lot of sense for things like dropping off kids to school. And the radar remains active up to 10 minutes after the car is turned off. So even if you park, turn off the car, it will keep its sensors going so that your kid is safe to get out. You can also get a Harman Kardon audio system, which is a first ever for Hyundai. And this was specially built for the Palisade. We got a chance to hear from and talk to the Harman Kardon system developer who explained exactly how they develop and test these things. And it was a really cool experience. So one of the big things that we went to Idaho to test out was how this thing handled on the road and a little bit of off-road driving. Now this is specifically designed with a rigid body to let the suspension do all the work and keep everything strong and smooth. The rigid body with high strength steel makes for a very safe vehicle as well. I think this is a great driving vehicle. You have very little road noise. It feels solid on the road, which is something you really want from a family SUV. One of the biggest gripes I have about my own family SUV, the Atlas, is that the steering is just a little bit too light for me. It doesn't feel as connected to the road as some other SUVs that I drove, but this Palisade really feels connected and really feels great to drive especially on long distances. Now we did get to do a little bit of light off-roading 
driving up some gravel roads up the sides of some mountains there in Idaho. There are really some great roads and it felt really nice to be able to drive the Palisade on those. But you do have the H-Track system that helps to get the right amount of traction to each tire for optimal power and traction. You do get drive modes, including Eco, which gives you 100% front wheel drive driving and Sport, which can split it from 65 in the front and 35 to the rear. You also get an auto leveling rear suspension to make sure that towing is easier. Now, some of the main competitors for the Palisade are vehicles like the Honda Pilot, the Ford Explorer, the Toyota Highlander, and again, the Volkswagen Atlas, which is what I own. Now, I really like the Explorer for its looks and technology. The Highlander has progressed a lot and has a lot of safety features that's great for families. And obviously, I really like the Atlas. I like the design of the Atlas, and it has a lot of space in it. But after a day of driving the Palisade, I can say I definitely really like this thing as well. Now, it has a higher base price than some of its competitors, including the Atlas. But once you start adding technology and bumping up in trims, you're definitely getting a lot more for your money once you step up into those higher trim levels. So I'm definitely drawn to the Palisade as a family SUV for my own family. I really enjoyed my short amount of time with it and again looking forward to spending more time and putting out a full review for you guys until then please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video leave me any questions or comments below and as always thanks for watching